These days, Chromebooks are a dime a dozen. They're largely regarded as a cheap alternative to a Windows laptop or the perfect starter device for students who are relying more and more on technology in the classroom. But Google's previous Pixel-branded Chromebooks have been more of aspirational devices intended mainly to show its partners what a top-of-the-line Chromebook should offer. But with its latest device, Google is taking a bit of a different approach. I'm Nick Gray, and this is my review of the Pixelbook Go. When you look at the Pixelbook Go, it's easy to see that this is Google's first Chromebook for the masses, not an experimental device intended for tech enthusiasts or those simply looking to deplete their bank accounts so that they can have the latest and greatest hardware that money can buy. Naturally, that means you're not gonna be getting a fancy hinge which allows the screen to flip over so that it turns into a tablet or a separate screen and keyboard setup like last year's Pixel Slate. But honestly, that's perfectly fine. As we've seen, Chromebooks work best as laptops and the Pixelbook Go is probably one of the best laptops I've used in recent years. The model Google sent over costs $850 and comes with an Intel Core i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage, and then there's a 13.3 inch 1080p display. But you can configure the laptop's options to drop the price as low as $650 or as high as $1400. I'm not sure who would want to spend that much money on a device running Chrome OS, but if you do, you'll be getting a 4K display, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage, along with a Core i7 processor. Those specs are pretty common for laptops within these price ranges, but what makes the Pixelbook Go really special is its keyboard, its build quality, and its amazing battery life. From a build perspective, this device hits all the right notes. The laptop is built from magnesium, cutting down its overall weight to just around 2 pounds while also keeping its frame extremely rigid. Rather than exposing the metal, Google chose to coat it with a soft touch paint which makes it feel like a high-end plastic. The 1080p touchscreen isn't really anything to write home about, but it is bright enough to be working in direct sunlight, something that we've struggled to do with most other Chromebooks. Unfortunately, the 16 by 9 aspect ratio does mean that you get large bezels above and below the display. It's not a huge issue, but if Google would have gone with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, it would have provided more space for browsing the web and getting work done, which is exactly what Google intends this device to do. The display hinge is tight enough to keep the panel from wobbling around while you're typing, but that typically means that you'll have a hard time opening the laptop with just one hand. But that's definitely doable thanks to the rubber ribs on the bottom of the Pixelbook Go, which keep it from sliding around on nearly any surface. The included 1080p webcam is pretty standard for laptops these days, but this one here actually performs pretty decently in low light situations during video calls. As for connectivity, you're looking at two USB-C ports, one on either side of the device, and then a 3.5mm headphone jack for those who still prefer a wired audio connection over Bluetooth. Now, as we all know, Google doesn't have a whole lot of experience when it comes to building laptops, but it somehow managed to build one of the best laptop keyboards that I've ever used. The keys offer just the right amount of travel with a satisfying muted click when pressed. Google's even so proud of the keyboard that it's marketing it as having hush keys, which honestly, I do think are a lot quieter than any other laptop keyboards that I've tested in a while. But of course, no keyboard is perfect. And in the case of the Pixelbook Go, the lack of a delete key is completely baffling and substituting the caps lock key in favor of a launcher key is completely unnecessary. The trackpad on the laptop is pretty good as well, giving users ample space for navigation and using Chrome OS's multi-finger gesture controls. That being said, I'm not a huge fan of the loud click. It's obvious that the engineers at Google didn't spend nearly as much time on the trackpad as they did on the keyboard. When it comes to battery life, this is where the Pixelbook Go truly shines. Google claims that the included 47 watt hour battery should deliver 12 hours of mixed use. And for the first time in a long time, a manufacturer actually got it right. In my testing, I averaged 12 hours and 11 minutes per charge, which is much longer than you would get from most other Chromebooks and Windows laptops these days. Naturally, those numbers do dip a little bit when you spend a few hours playing Android games or using the webcam for a video call, but you'll still be able to get at least nine to 10 hours of runtime out of this device even when you're pushing it hard. And when you do manage to run down the battery enough to warrant a charge, the included fast charger will deliver two hours of runtime just after 20 minutes of charging, or top off the battery completely from zero to 100 in just under two hours. 
Those who have never used a Chrome OS device before should have no issues jumping in and getting started. Compared to Windows and Mac OS, Google's operating system is pretty minimal and simple. The Chrome browser, of course, is the main workhorse here, since most of everything that we do these days is on the web, but users still have access to thousands of Android apps, which can be installed through the Play Store. While I didn't run into any issues running the Android apps that I installed on the Pixelbook Go, there are still quite a few applications like Netflix and Instagram that still haven't been optimized to support Chrome OS's multi-window resizing functionality. These apps still take up the full screen and can't be used side by side like the other applications can. It's not really a huge deal, but this is something that app developers should have solved a long time ago since Android apps on Chrome OS have been around for more than two years now. Unfortunately, Chrome OS still isn't the operating system for everybody. Even with the new dedicated file manager that's built into the operating system and a wide selection of Android apps through the Play Store, the platform still has its shortcomings and it's a hard sell for those who wanna build websites, create art, or even make videos. Now, I'm not saying those things are completely out of the realm of possibility with devices like the Pixelbook Go, but even great applications like PowerDirector for creating videos on Android and Chrome devices simply can't compete with professional applications that are built specifically for Windows or Mac OS. This brings us to the final question. Who is the Pixelbook Go made for? This laptop features all the specifications that you'd want out of a decent Windows machine, but the main selling point of the operating system still comes down to the Chrome browser. And if all you need is a web browser for surfing the web, there are plenty of other cheaper options out there. But if you love the simplicity of Chrome OS and want a device that could last you three to five years without needing a hardware upgrade, the 650 or 850 options might not actually be a bad investment. But I think you'd have to be crazy to want to spend anything more than that. For the last couple of weeks, I've really been enjoying the Pixelbook Go, and if it offered all of the software experiences that I need, I'd definitely make it my daily driver. But until then, I'll be looking for something else.